So now all of this is very abstract. It's a kind of easy to get lost in the mathematical description, hear it, and does not have any sense of what any of this meant. <laughs> um, so that's why I want to show you this uh, simulation, because this simulation will connect to something that you have already seen. It's uh, like, you know, this is not the first time you're dealing with the waves. You have dealt with it in 4A, you dealt with it when we were doing optics. And that's kind of why we do optics in this semester, because that gives you a kind of a place where you can ground your intuition on. Optics, they are, you know, I mean, wave optics are more interesting than geometric optics, but they are not, you know, they are not so unintuitively difficult like quantum mechanics can be. So let me bring up, see if I can remember which simulation it is I wanted to use. Um, I think I would say wave interference. Maybe, oh, maybe this is what I'm looking for. Uh, it says quantum wave interference, so that must be it, right? <laughs> let me try it. Um, So what I want to start out with is the description of Young's, so, so you know, I've been talking about the finite square or infinite square because that's the easiest thing to solve for, but it's also very artificial, very abstract. So the real, actual realistic experiment dealing with the quantum mechanics would be something like Young's double slit experiment, something that would illustrate wave properties of whatever it is you're looking at. So we could say, um, ooh, do I have lasers? Oh, two lasers. I don't know what that is. Let me just be here. Um, all right, turn on the laser. Maybe I should have turned off, oh. Um, <laughs> turn off some light. Maybe, uh, let's see. Is my screen not bright enough? Is that what it is? Or, oh, okay, I didn't turn it off. All right, um, this might be too bright. Let me just put it. Uh, let me reset everything. Uh, reset. All right, uh, let's see. So this is a kind of illustrating intensity of the dot. So, you know, imagine this. This is green laser. Imagine I'm shining it here. So that's a like, zoomed up version of this dot. And so you want to show the wave property of this light that's um, hitting the wall or screen. So to, in order to show wave property, you put in a double slit. Then um, I probably need to make it a little bit dimmer. So this is what you would see um, when you do the inter your Young's double slit interference experiment. And this was the basis on which we said light is a wave. Right? Yeah. Now, so I want to show you what it means, uh, one of the um, sort of consequence of us acknowledging that light is also a particle. So what you are seeing here is a high intensity situation. As a, you did this estimate on the photoelectric effect lab, I think, how many light photons are there in one watt of um, you know, light bulb emitting like 10 to 20 or something, right? So uh, when you have that many particles, it's easy for the particle nature to get just buried in the, that large number of particles. Like when you see a cup of water, you don't see individual water molecule, but I assume most of us here believe in the existence of water molecules, right? <laughs> okay, um, so what I want to do is, I want to show you what it would look like if we reduce the intensity down a lot and fired uh, essentially such a small intensity that, you know, it reduced in one watt intensity down by a factor of 10 to the 20. So that if you detect any light at all, you would be detecting only one single photon at a time. So that's who I believe what this is supposed to be for. Uh, let me set up everything the exact same way I have things here. So I think I want the screen to not fade because um, I'm gonna be firing very slowly. Let me put double solid here. Probably the same parameter as the other one. All right. So this is one way of demonstrating the particle nature of photon. When you fire this, this is, well, you wouldn't see this. When the light hits the screen, this is what you see. 
you know, you see a single photon. You can imagine um, there's a, a very sensitive detector called a photomultiplier. These are so, so sensitive they can actually detect single individual photons with like 20% efficiency. Um, so you can imagine having an array of those very sensitive light detectors. They are so sensitive that if you shine too much light on it, you will ruin them. So you do this in a dark room very carefully. So you have an array of, let's say, 100 of them. So you can detect where the light falls um, there, if you detect one at all. So you fire one at a time. And each time, what you're finding is that each time, of the 100 photomultipliers you have, you have only one registering at a given time. And you can also do this with a CCD. Uh, what does CCD stand for? CMOS something detector? Do you, everyone here knows what CCD is, right? Light sensor on your digital cameras? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. If those are sensitive enough, they can also kind of count to one photon at a time, but not as well as photomultiplier. But this is what you would see. As you fire one photon at a time, you would, you know, um, as you emit such a small amount of light that there can really only be one or two photons, you see uh, those particles detected at some location. And this is what I mean. It, it'll kind of seem random, right? It seems random. I don't know if I can, oh, I can do rapid. Because all of this, this is just the animation. You wouldn't actually see that. Um, so let me just do rapid. So, all right. So you keep firing and you think, oh, so I guess light is particle after all. Light is not wave. But that's not quite right. Because when you did this experiment, uh, this wasn't wrong. <laughs> this, like no one faked this result. This, uh, at least, well, when you guys did an interference and diffraction lab. You didn't fake anything. You saw what you saw, right? So this result is still right. So let's say you know you do this and you just keep firing, hoping you will see something different. And as I said, you have to do this maybe hundred, thousand, large number of times that you get some statistically significant number of particles. Then after a while, you begin to build up a pattern. Uh, let's see. Can I? No, I, I think if you do too quickly, then it doesn't actually register. Okay, I have to wait for it to actually hit and then fire. Hit. Okay, this is a good pattern. Where? Oh, there? Okay, that's a lot better. Thank you. All right, let's wait for a bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I, didn't, I wasn't really keen on firing it, clicking it a thousand times. <laughs> All right, so maybe some of you see the pattern, maybe you don't yet. Um, I don't want to fire for too long because the pattern could get also washed up a little bit. Okay, I think this is probably good enough. So you can almost imagine a very grainy picture that's taken at very low light conditions, if, especially if you do it with a film, like a high speed, high ISO film. Okay, let me just stop it here, stop the auto repeat. So this is some kind of intensity pattern you are now starting to build up. Compare it to this. Do you see similarity? Yeah. Where there was no intensity, somehow even though each time you are detecting single particle at a time, um, those particles have zero probability of falling here or here. But each time you detect a particle, you don't see this pattern. You know there's this underlying pattern here because of one, you see it when you have a high number of particles. And this is really the thing that will, um, if you get too deep into it, will get you philosophically messed up maybe. <laughs> um, um, even when you fire such a small amount of light that only one gets detected at a time, there is some kind of underlying influence that uh, not, never letting the particle fall along this line. So this is what I was trying to describe here, that each time you detect a particle, each time you fire this and you detect a particle there, you detect it as a particle, a single very narrow location thing. But after you have collected enough the, of them, you see the pattern that, uh, that you can attribute to the wave nature somehow. Because this uh, dark fringe, you would only see it with a destructive interference. So um, that's probably where I should uh, leave um, the whole topic of measurement on.